Johnny Dollar. Don Pinkley, Johnny. At Sheridan Mutual Insurance. New Orleans, Louisiana. That's right. Still down here in New Orleans. How are you, Don? I'm just fine, Johnny. Fine. But as usual, when I call you, I got a small problem. And long as you know something about boxing... Boxing? Yes, sir. Don't you remember? Last time you came down here after you wound up the case, you and I took in a boxing match. <laughs> Seems to me I won a fast 20 bucks from you that night on an Italian kid who called himself Touchy Tarantino. That's right. That boy was a fighter with a real future. Not anymore, Johnny. This is why you covered your losses by selling him a $25,000 policy. What was that crack about his future? I'm afraid he has none, Johnny. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Suicide or murder. What happened to him? Nothing, Johnny. Not yet. But you think something will? Like I said, either suicide or murder. Well, which and why? Fly on down here and I'll tell you. Okay? Okay, Don, I'm on my way. The CBS Radio Network brings you Bob Reddick in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Surety Mutual Insurance Company, New Orleans office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Ring of Death matter. <laughs> Expense account item one, four seventy-five for a cab to Bradley Field. Item two, eighty-seven forty for a flight to New Orleans. It was early evening by the time the plane set down at Moisan International Airport. And item three is 550 for a cab into the Roosevelt Hotel. From there, knowing that Don Pinkley would be long gone from his office, I set out to explore the town. Most interesting city in the United States, it's called. And with good reason. The famous old French Quarter is one of the most beautiful spots that I know. Well, after dark, the deafening din from the nightclubs along Bourbon Street home of the real, original Dixieland jazz. Item four, if I can get away with it, is $15 for, um, well, call it refreshment, or maybe midnight lunch. After all, I did put away a sandwich at the old Absinthe House on the corner of Bourbon and Viendro. And then, at 9.30 the next morning, I barged in on Don Pinkley at his office on St. Charles Avenue. Right in here, Johnny, where we can talk undisturbed. Sure, Don, whatever you say. Sit down, sir. Thanks. Here for a little drink. And at this hour of the morning? Most of you northern boys seem to expect it when you get down to this part of the country. <laughs> no, thanks. Okay. I'll get right to the point. Touchy Tarantino. Only his first name is really Tony. Antonio Tarantino. And you've insured him for $25,000. So what goes with him? Johnny, when you were down here before... He was one of our most promising young fighters. Well, he certainly looked it when I saw him. Yes, and he married a nice little girl named Angie. She's his beneficiary. I see. Yes, Tony did very well for himself, except financially. What do you mean? I mean his manager, a crooked promoter by the name of Raul Martinez. Mm -hmm. So Touchy took all the wallops and Martinez took all the dough. Huh? That's right. Then out in Los Angeles a couple of weeks ago... Tony fell out of the ring and busted his head. Oh, that's too bad. Did Martinez stick around, help him with his hospital bill and so on? He did not. He left him flat. Mm -hmm. But now, Don... And what happens as soon as Tony and his wife are able to work their way back home? I don't know what happens. Martinez has latched onto him again and set up a fight for him. And? He'll be murdered, Johnny. You mean that bang on the head? Of course. The doctor out in L.A. told Angie that for him to step into the ring again would be nothing short of suicide. One hard blow above his left ear and he's dead. But, Don, if all it takes is the word of a doctor to keep him from fighting... Somewhere in Mexico. Mexico? Mm-hmm. And the fight is tomorrow night. Where in Mexico? Well, that's the trouble. I haven't the least idea. But if you can find out... Well, Johnny? I can try...
Finding out where Martinez had taken Tony wasn't nearly as hard as I'd expected. My pal, Johnny Ortiz, at police headquarters, gave me the name of a stoolie in the Mexican section, whose name was Miguel Andrade. Andrade, for 50 bucks, that's item five, gave me the name of a small town not far across the Texas border in Mexico. And I'm not naming that town, say, for diplomatic reasons. Item six is five dollars for a cab to the airport. And then 4305, plane fare to Brownsville, Texas. Item seven is $21 for a taxi to that poor little town in Mexico. I arrived about 9 a.m. The town consisted of a main street mostly full of souvenir shops and lined with tourist cars from the U.S. At one end was a small sports arena, closed. But there were billboards all over the place advertising the fights, including Tony's with Pancho Gutierrez. So I tried the one so-called hotel there along the main street... And in a set of rooms on the second floor, found his wife. Yes, yes. So I found out the way you did, Mr. Dollar. And I followed them down here. I found out that they were staying here. But what can I do? Angie. So, per favore, please, if you can keep my Antonio from fighting tonight. Where is he, Angie? Is he here? No. This Raul Martinez has him locked up in the dressing room in the... In what do they call the Colosseum, where the fight will be. Okay, then. Because, per carita, he knows that I would stop him. That I would not let my Antonio go into that ring tonight. So, what can I do? What do you mean, what can you do? You know that Tony might be killed if he fights? I know, I know. But since the accident to his head, my Antonio is not the same. He believes anything this Martinez he tells him. Angie. And Martinez, he tells him that he can beat this Pancho... Gutierrez and, and Antonio believes Now, him. listen, Angie, I have seen Tony fight, and I've seen Pancho Gutierrez fight. I've seen him in Boston, New York, all over the place. And what do you think? Even if Tony were in shape, and I don't see how he can be after what happened to him in Los Angeles, well, I would hate to bet on him. But uh, they tell me that all of these, what you call the odds, are on, on my Antonio. What? Oh, so that's it. That's why Martinez brought him down here where they don't know what happened to Tony. Sure, the odds are on him, but Martinez's money is on Pancho. But uh, you mean that Martinez, he he bets against his own boy, my my Antonio? Knowing what he does about him, why else would he let him fight? No. Then he wants him killed. All right, Angie, come on. We're going over to the Coliseum. But I can't. Why not? Because of Jose. Who's Jose? Because that Martinez... because I am not alone here. That is right, Senor Dollar. Mm-hmm. Hey. No. You stay where you are, Senor. Because if you get up from that chair, I will blow your head off. Now, that's a corny line. Jose, please. So you would keep Tarantino from fighting tonight, eh? I'd keep him from getting killed. And uh, you, Senor? Me? What do you mean, me? If you do not wish to be killed, you will forget Tarantino and you will go back to the estate. Sorry, mister. No. Do not move. Oh, put that thing down. See, I will put it down. Like this. Oh! Oh, say you have killed him. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. Hi, this is Dennis James to explain why Kellogg's Way is the reliable way to get the effectiveness you want from brand with just half a cup a day. See, Kellogg's All Brand is the real Battle Creek formula the one that millions of people depend on. And they depend on it because Kellogg's All Brand contains more vital brand bulk to help you keep regular. It's low in calories, and it's mighty pleasant eating, too. Kellogg's All Brand comes in crisp, toasted shreds that have a wholesome brand muffin taste. I think you'll like it. So be sure you remember, for the effectiveness you want from brand, get reliable Kellogg's All Brand. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. 
Martinez's little pal, Jose, whatever his name was, had suggested there in that hotel room that I mind my own business, go back to the States. And that's exactly where I found myself when I came to, on top of a rubbish heap, somewhere on the outskirts of Brownsville, Texas, minus my gun, of course. How he smuggled me back across the border, I'll never know. But at this point, I didn't care. Item eight is another 21 bucks for another cab. That little unnamed Mexican town. And this time I went straight to the so-called Coliseum, the little sports arena. Five bucks American got me in through the janitor's entrance into Tarantino's dressing room. And I suddenly realized what a blow on the head had done to this formerly clean, alert, ambitious young fighter. What do you mean you starved the fight, Dollar? What's the matter with you, Tony? Don't you realize that if Pancho Gutierrez hands you one over that left ear, you'll never get up off the canvas alive? Oh, you don't know Martinez. Oh, I don't, huh? No, you think he ain't fixed it up so I don't get hit that way? Kid, are you out of your mind? No. Don't you talk like that. I'm all right. Martinez says I'm all right. Now listen to me, Tony. Martinez doesn't care how you get hit, and he doesn't care what happens to you when you do. Do you think that crook is betting on you tonight? No, I don't. Do you think for one minute that... What was that? So the fight is fixed. So I take a dive in the fourth. So everything's okay. You throw a fight. Why not? So I'll clean up. Keep that word clean out of it. What do you mean? I mean that bang on the head has done more damage than you think, if you still can. Yeah, hey, now listen, Dollar. Somebody suggest you throw a fight a couple of years ago, you would have slugged him. So what? So it's now i got to think of my wife. You're a good boy, then. You're a good fighter. You're a clean fighter. That's why Angie married you, isn't it? You keep her out Now listen this. to me, Tony. So what if I can't fight a gin anymore and up in the States? I throw a fight for Martinez like this one. Here in this town where nobody cares... You give me enough dough to get back on my feet. Maybe start a business, something like that. You believe that? Why not? Why didn't he give you an honest share of the purses that you won for him before? Because I was only starting out. Oh, sure. Fine, that old line. Why didn't he help you after you busted your head in L.A.? Well, why didn't he? I don't know. I don't care. He's helping me now. He's helping you get killed. What's the matter with you, Tony? When you got back from L.A., you went to Martinez because you didn't know where else to go, right? So I was broke. And I told him, after the way that he left me there, he had to help me. Had to get you more fights? No, he had to help me is all. So he said he would, and now he is. You dumb ox. Hey, don't you talk like that to talk to Listen, when you came begging to him, all he saw was that if he didn't get you out of his hair, he'd have you tagging after him the rest of his life. So why not? Down here in a place nobody ever heard of except a lot of gamblers out for a fast buck. Why not let you fight? Why not let you kill yourself? Not only make a pile of money on you, but he'd be rid of you once and for all. <laughs> You're a real crazy, Dollar. He wants me to go out there and get killed? You think he'd fix the fight? You think he'd tell me take a dive? Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's it, Tony. Maybe what's it? Do you know for sure that this fight is fixed? Sure, I know. Martinez, he told me. Sure, he told you, because he knew you wouldn't dare to fight if you thought you might be killed. He no doubt fixed things with whoever passes for a doctor in this dump and then set you up on the promise that you wouldn't be hurt, and you believed him, you sucker. You know what I don't believe, Lala? What? You. Now, get out of here. Sure. Sure. Sure, Tony, anything you say. Yeah. But have you told Angie that this fight is to be a setup? She don't even know where I am. Oh, she doesn't, then. Anyhow, I said leave her out of this. Keep your hands off me. And listen, you tell Angie, you tell Angie anything, I'll tell you. No need to. Huh? I'm sure that when she sees you in the ring tonight... You mean she's down here? Well, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do it. But when I bring her to the arena tonight... Oh, no, no, no. No, uh, because if uh, Angie... Look, l- listen, she, she knows me the way I fight, and if she sees I take... If she sees... Yeah. Think it over, Tony. Get out. Get out of here! Sure, and I'll have the police stop this fight. Don't be funny. 
Martinez, he owns his town. The fights, the cockfights, the gambling, the police, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Now get out. So you came back here, Senor Dollar. Jose. Martinez, he wouldn't like this dollar. And so he should know about it. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. This time I was ready for him. When I ducked and his roundhouse slid over my head, I leaned into his knees and then rose and slammed the edge of my hand across the back of his neck. And again. Uh... And for some strange reason, he suddenly gave up. He was dead to the world when I hauled him into a cleaning closet at the far end of the corridor and gagged and tied him down with some old rags rolled up lengthwise to make him plenty strong. That accomplished, I started back to Tony's dressing room. But the door of it was ajar, oh, and by call. edging up close, I could oh, hear someone you talking to him. Eh? <laughs> and you believe him, eh, Tony? This Juanito, this Johnny Dollar. Uh, don't be silly, boy. I see. I don't know, Martinez. I don't know. Well, I do. He's up to some trick, is all. But uh, if he come around here, he walk in here again. <laughs> Quien sabe? Who knows? You see this? Hey, you... You got a silence on that gun. See. Si. So nobody knows if I use it on him, eh? <laughs> you would kill him? Oh, see, si, Tony. Just like Pancho Guterres will kill you. What? If you do not take that dive tonight. Oh, no. Listen, Martinez. Don't worry, boy. Don't worry. <laughs> In the fourth, you take the dive. That's all. Have a commander. Welcome aboard. Have a commander, welcome aboard. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. Have a commander and see. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. And in commander, the tobacco is vacuum cleaned. Have a commander, welcome aboard. Try new king-size Philip Morris Commanders made on a new machine, the Mark 8, that takes rich, full-flavored tobacco and gently vacuum cleans it. And the cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes, noticeably better. The cleaner the tobacco, the better it tastes. And in Commander, the tobacco is vacuum cleaned. Have a Commander. Welcome aboard. I tore on over to the tiny police headquarters and talked to the fat, sullen-looking chief who sat there in his rumpled uniform, sipping at a glass of tequila. But every time I mentioned the name of Martinez, he shrugged as though he didn't understand English and stared blankly out the window. When I tried to get tough with him, he spoke an order to a couple of his men who promptly tossed me out into the dusty street. It looked as though Tony was right. Somehow, Martinez did have this dirty little town under his thumb. I went on over to the hotel again to look for Angie. The suite of rooms was empty. A stupidly grinning clerk at the desk could tell me nothing except that she'd left a while before with Jose. By the time I got through knocking on doors all over town, finding no sign of her, it was time for the fights. I knew there was no chance of getting a Tony in his dressing room again, so I bought myself a ticket and went in. Every seat in that scrubby little stadium was taken. People were crouching in the aisles. But then I saw Angie standing at the rail in back of the last row of seats. Angie! Excuse me, let me through here, please. Excuse me. Angie! Mr. Dollar, please tell me. Could you stop him? I don't know, Angie. I don't know. Well, I do, Senor Dollar. Martinez. You feel this here against your side? Mr. Martinez, please, please. Quiet, my little girl. And, Senor Taylor, if you try anything, anything at all, I will pull this trigger. Now, shall we watch the fights? And so we stood there, the three of us, watching the final dull preliminary. And then, Tony's fights. And he looked pretty good, despite his lack of training. Physically, that is. 
Mentally, I wondered. But I didn't wonder about Martinez's gun. It was there against my ribs all the time. Don't worry, Dollar. He cannot last. If he does not drop in the fourth, punch us right to the side of his head, <laughs> and it will be all over. In the first round, Tony went out circling slowly in a half crouch, playing it safe, and then backing away to make Pancho lead. Watching him, watching him, doing all he could to keep the left side of his head away. A couple of times, he leaned in and flicked a hard left to Pancho's mouth. But Pancho was plenty cagey, too, knowing that Tony would tire long before he would. By the end of the second, Tony was tired. The Mexican boy was too fresh, too fast for him, and Tony's punch lacked the power it used to have. In the third, the lack of training really began to show. It was obvious now that Pancho was aiming, deliberately aiming for only one place for a spot over Tony's left ear. In the fourth, Pancho danced easily around him, trying to set him up. He drove a couple of rights, hook fashion, into Hutchie's ribs. Turn him again. Then in a half-rolling clinch along the ropes, Tony spun and slammed to the side of Pancho's head with a looping overhand right. But it left his own body wide open for jabs that almost broke his ribs. And then in a series of clinches, Tony lasted out the fatal round. Beside me, Martinez began to mutter angrily. And in the fifth, Pancho knew that Tony wasn't going to take that dive then or ever. And when he tried for Tony's head over the left ear, he telegraphed it every time. And Tony was ready for him. But Tony was tiring badly now and hanging on too much. After an awkward feint, he tried a looper to the head that missed by a mile. Pancho let it breeze on by and then threw a short, hard right to the chin. As Tony sagged against the ropes, the bell saved him. But he was badly hurt. And it was all too obvious that his seconds weren't giving him much help. How he ever got up on his feet for the six, I'll never know. But somehow he did. And then when Pancho tore into him, again aiming for his head, Tony turned almost as though he were falling. But he came up all the way up from the canvas with everything he had to the right that caught Pancho on the button that lifted him clear off the floor. And as Pancho fell, Tony fumbled his way almost blindly to a neutral corner and managed to stay on his feet only long enough to hear the full count. But the crowd went wild. And then I felt a sudden movement beside me, and I saw that Martinez had raised the gun to lean it against the post so that he couldn't miss, even at that range, and his face was livid. I swung up with my left with everything I had, and the gun, whirling as he struck it against the post, went off in his face. It's all right, Angie. It's all right. Yes, Martinez was dead. And, of course, the police moved in. And when they realized, he was definitely, finally out of the way. I'm sure they all breathed a deep, sincere sigh of relief. And believe it or not, Angie and Tony and I had a formal escort back to the border that was fit for royalty. Expense account total, including all the incidentals I could think of, $389 even. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a trip to South Jersey and a murder to stop a murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Reddick, is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zerato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Heard in our cast were Robert Dryden as Touchy, Joan Loring as Angie, Ralph Camargo as Martinez, Mandel Kramer as Don Pringle, and Danny Arco as Jose. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Art Hanna speaking.